So one of the first signs you can tell when someone is becoming a watch enthusiast is when they start caring about the movements inside the watches. And often one of the questions that you'll hear from these people are, is that an in-house movement? People tend to associate in-house movements to a greater commitment to the craft of watchmaking, a more unique style and a concept of exclusivity. But when you take a deeper look at this, you realize that the aggrandizement of in-house movements might not be as warranted as many of us believe. What is going on everybody? My name is Teddy Baldessar, and in this video, we're gonna be discussing a really highly debated issue, in-house movements versus third-party movements like ETAs. So first, we're gonna take a look at what does it mean to be in-house? Next, taking a look at ETA and the history of that company. And then finally, taking a look at our verdict here. Are in-house movements worth that higher price point? or are they overrated and should we go for third-party movement manufacturers instead? So guys, without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now you guys asked, so we're gonna first start off this video with a wristwatch check and I am wearing my Young Hands Max Build Chronoscope. Bauhaus design, the dial is busy, but it, it manages to have just a very minimalist type aesthetic, despite having a lot of action taking place on it. So you're buying this watch for the design. I love it. It looks great on my wrist, even my smaller wrist because of the very compact lugs. Big fan of the watch. So first up, what does it actually mean to be in-house? An in-house movement is a watch movement that a brand produces by themselves in the confines of their manufacturing facility. However, this definition needs to be taken with a grain of salt since themselves is often a stretch for most brands. Even the most basic mechanical movements have over a hundred parts and some complex ones contain over a thousand. Few companies have the infrastructure to produce all of the parts needed to make an entire watch movement within their walls of their manufacturing facility. In fact, many brands that produce true in-house watch movements still purchase certain highly specialized parts from suppliers. So if this is the case, why do so many love and get really excited when they hear that a company is producing their movements in-house? Like I previously stated, people tend to associate in-house movements to a greater commitment to the craft of watchmaking. Usually it means that it has a more unique design and finishing on the actual movement. And you have that aspect of exclusivity that comes with getting an in-house movement compared to a third-party movement. Some of this is true, of course, but at the end of the day, what really matters to me, and I would say for most people, is how does the watch function and does it keep accurate time? Despite what those clever marketers at watch companies may tell you, you can't guarantee that an in-house movement is going to be better quality than a third-party one, especially from the brand that we're gonna be taking a look at here third-party giant known as ETA. So ETA was founded by Eterna in 1856. However, some part of its production line can be traced back to the late 18th century. In other words, ever since their conception, they have been a highly respected name in the industry. ETA is headquartered in Switzerland and is a subsidiary owned by the giant that is the Swatch Group. Through a series of mergers, ETA has become the largest manufacturer of Swiss watch movements and controls a virtual monopoly over their production and supply. Their movements really have become ubiquitous, being seen in a vast majority of automatic watches on the market. The three most iconic ETA movements are their workhorse ETA 28242, their ETA 2892, uh, this is a newer movement in the grand scheme of ETA, that it dates back to the 1970s, and is a more refined and usually found in more expensive, prestigious watch brands. In fact, the Omega coaxial movement invented by George Daniels was derived from this ETA 2892. And then finally, we have the Valjoux 7750, AKA the ETA 7750, an extremely popular movement used in the majority of mechanical chronographs, a movement that I am very familiar with as it is featured in my Max Bill chronoscope that I have on my wrist here. One important note about ETA movements are they're highly cloned and replicated since the patents are now expired. This company has been around for a long time. That said, ETA movements are no slouches. They have been featured in Breitling, IWCs, Tudors, and many other great brands. And just as an important side note, when these caliber of brands use these movements, they're often decorating and giving their own personal touch to these modified ETAs. So now the question, what is better, in-house movements or ETA movements? So without a doubt, there are some fantastic in-house movements from several premier watchmaking companies. 
For companies that are demanding high prices for their products, many cling on to their in-house movement since it indicates a high level of research and development and craftsmanship that took place in order to develop these watches. For example, a company like Patek creates such great movements that they don't even need to bother sending their watches in to be tested to be certified Swiss chronometers since their standards eclipse that of the chronometer testing. That said, 80 to 90% of brands out there you have to question whether in-house is actually a good thing. When you're just looking at a general pros and cons, ETA movements definitely, I think, bring more pros to the table. They are cheaper for manufacturers to obtain. They have been around and have been tested for many decades. They are easier and cheaper to service. They also have great accuracy and durability that matches many in-house counterparts. My thoughts here are this. I would say in most situations, I would honestly prefer ETA movements or modified ETAs over an in-house movement. Unless we're talking about watches from Omega, Rolex, Lange, Patek, and watches of that ilk. The reliability, the affordability, and the battle-tested ETA movements are often the better place to go. Most companies just don't have the capital and the resources to produce in-house movements that match let alone outpunch their ETA counterparts. And of course, if a watch is upwards of seven to $10,000, I would expect more than just slapping in a third party ETA movement in the watch and saying, here you go. That said, I do think in the vast majority of instances, this term of in-house is definitely overrated. And I think a lot of companies are using it as a marketing ploy to pull at our heartstrings as enthusiasts. Now, I know there are a lot of opinions about this. So what do you guys think of this issue? Are you in favor of ETA movements? Do you think in-house movements are absolutely worth it? You will pay a premium to get it. I'd love to hear where you guys reside in the spectrum that is this issue uh, down in the comments below. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. Also hit that bell icon so you know when I release content in the future. We are moving right along with this and our channel is growing really quick. I can't thank you guys enough for all of your continued support. And until next time, guys, be well, and I will see you all very soon.